Hello everybody, I'm Frayn Olson, the Crop Economist and Marketing Specialist with NDSU Extension. Uh, I'd like to provide a little bit of a background on some of the changes that we're now seeing in the grain markets. And again, looking forward to having a, a more detailed discussion during our Zoom meeting. So please save your questions and we'll try and get them answered as best I can. So we had some interesting information here just before the 4th of July. Uh, we had USDA came out with the acreage report. Again, that's a survey-based uh, uh, estimate of how many acres farmers actually did plant. Uh, and what was the surprise to the marketplace and kind of hit the reset button on what our expectations are for this fall was we had a much larger reduction or cutback in corn acres nationally than we had expected. So coming into the report, the, the market traders and analysts were expecting a slight reduction in corn plantings from the previous estimate we got in March at the prospective plantings report. So the traders and analysts, again, were thinking about or expecting about a 1.2 million acre reduction in corn plantings. We actually got about a 5 million acre reduction in corn plantings, which is pretty substantial in the world of corn. And again, kind of hit that reset button on what our expectations might be for total bushels produced as we move forward. Combine that with what happened in the soybean side. So the traders and market analysts were looking for about a 1.2 million acre increase in soybean plantings. Again, a shift out of corn and shift into soybeans. When in reality, the, the survey based acreage report showed about a 300,000 acre increase. So we were expecting 1.2 million acres. We got an increase. We only got about 300,000. So a much bigger cutback in corn acres than expected, an increase in soybean acres from the perspective, from what the market was expecting, but not a dramatic increase. And so that really put a lift into both the corn market and the soybean market, and then which of course spilled over into the spring wheat markets. So given this new information, and as we move forward in time, which is really again what everybody's kind of concerned about, where are we going from here? So right now, there's two big things in the marketplace that are really influencing kind of psychology or, mar or, or what people are expecting to happen. One of them, of course, is the yield expectations or the yield forecasts. And as we get into this critical time period of late July and into August, we're going to have the kind of key reproductive stages for both corn and soybeans. So the markets are going to be watching on the supply side the weather reports very, very closely. We're going to be looking at nighttime temperatures, daytime temperatures, rainfall to try and get a better indication of how large might this corn crop really be. And it, on the same side with the soybeans, again, August tends to be that really critical reproductive stage for soybeans for both rainfall as well as temperatures. So we're moving into this time period when we normally see a lot of volatility in grain prices. Now on the wheat side, we don't see quite as much volatility on wheat because Again, by the time we get into August, we're actually looking at you know, yield uh, reports and harvest starting to progress. Uh, but obviously the, corn, the wheat crop does get tied up into the news that happens in the corn and the soybean in area. So the, that's the supply side. We've got some supply side issues. The other side of the equation, again, the, the markets are watching this very, very closely, is Chinese buying habits. We have a phase one agreement that's been signed between the United States and China for a trade agreement. And under that trade agreement, China has uh, agreed to purchase additional US agricultural products. Now to date, those purchases have been a little bit slower than what a lot, a lot of market traders are really hoping for. But as we move into this fall season, as we move into kind of that harvest time period, historically, that's when the Chinese start to really increase or ramp up their purchases. So on the demand side, we're gonna be watching our export sales numbers and in particular, how much product, agricultural products are we selling into the Chinese market? So again, um, hopefully this will provide some framework, some background for asking some questions, for trying to have a, a more broader discussion when we have our follow-up Zoom meeting later on. So with that, I'd like to conclude and say thank you for listening, and I'm looking forward to trying and answering your questions. Mm -hmm.